There are those who have hit the wall at Indy, and there are those who will. (laughs) It's not a question of if, it's when. Welcome, Connor Daly. Um, before Hello, before anything, I just wanted to say that Connor was the guy that welcomed me last year the best. <laughs> Took me out for dinner when I was on my own. I had a Raul the bus, but I was a bit on my own in the US and Connor really looked after me, so thank you, brother. Hey, of course. You know what? It's important to make sure people know that racing over here is a lot of fun. We respect wherever you came from, you know what I mean? We respect the, the racing heritage, the racing history. Basically, what we're going to do is about talk about your career and get people to know you. All right, let's do it. They may know you from nightclubs. No, no, that you know? would never happen. No. <laughs> you were born in Indiana. Yes. So that Wikipedia that got part, that part right. Yep. Who did you start racing and when and how? Not the boring speech that you yeah. would normally give me good ones. No, I mean, honestly, it all started like with my dad, who was, of course, um, you know, he was a Formula One driver as well. So my dad did a ton of racing, but he retired when I was born. So I never I never saw him race. Okay. So I, like, I was born in 91. His last race was the Sebring 12 Hours in 92. And so that was it. And so, you don't remember when you I did not you remember. You should, I mean, I remember I, everything. Yeah, it's it's tough. And then, you know what's sad though too, is he tested, the in 1994, I think he tested the all active Williams Formula yes. One car. And like, he got to drive that. And like, again, I was too young to remember yeah. that, but I would have loved to have seen that. So I was always around racing. And I mean, I'm the oldest brother of my, of my, of my three brothers as well. So we got into go-karting like everyone else when I was 10 and that was it. That was all we did is go to the go-kart track. Your mom, Uh she was on the water. Yeah, she was a water gal. Yeah, she raced jet skis. But again, when I was young. Super fast, not not like go jet ski like. She was a world champion. Yeah, like a world champion jet ski racer, which is crazy. And like we, I grew up on a lake, so my my parent, even my dad, like he's a, obviously a racer, and so he would get out on the skis too. But he broke all of his legs racing, so like it doesn't work as well when you have a bunch of broken legs trying to race jet skis. <laughs> and yeah, they were all very talented on the water, and I hate the water. Cannot do it. I raced a boat once, and I don't think I ever really want to do it again. Very way too scary. Too scary. Too scary. You know, you flip it or you finish on the grass. We fit well. We didn't finish on the grass, and we didn't die. So that's all that matters. Okay. So you started go-karting like 10, like yep. pretty much like all of us do. Yeah. And then in the States. Yes, so did all, all the racing over here, right? But obviously, like, my dad's Irish, so he, you know, he knew the path to Formula One, you know, as you do. And so I, I had kind of won all the championships over here that I could win the Road to Indy stuff. And then I was 18, and it was like, all right, well, if we want to try to go to Formula One, we have to go to Europe. At the time, it was GP3. Yep. You know, got got a great opportunity to go over there, and, uh, race with Carla in my first year, and then ART for the next yep. next two. And ART is obviously a very, very good team. And your friend in French. And lo- I learned a lot of French. A yes. lot of French. We won't disclose any of that no, in the video. No, no. Yeah, it's you know it's rough around the edges, my French, but, uh, but I did learn and I did spend a lot of time in France. So that, I mean that that was really an interesting experience, like in my career, obviously, because you know you're going up against the best of the best. You know I was seeing guys like you in Formula One and and anyone else that was over there trying to do that, and you know to win races over there I think is really special. Obviously in GP3, GP2, like I mean that's the top for the single seater yeah. like series. So like to be able to be you know beating guys. You know that that uh, you know that we know are in Formula One now, and, and and just having a shot at a championship over there was really cool, and I learned a lot. And I think you know coming back over here, it was definitely worth it to go over there and at least you know get close. Not See, not close enough, but we got close. No, you did GP3. I drove a Formula One car a few times. Yeah, you did. You yeah. did. For well, anyone that doesn't know that, yeah, for Cynthia. Mm-hmm. No, then was named Racing Racing Point, and now Aston Martin. Mm-hmm. So GP3, you almost won the championship. You were close. Yes. It was one of those championships. One where race. Like, top seven was like within two yeah. points of each other. Right? We we were leading the championship at Monza. And I'll never forget one of the cars at the first chicane came and wiped out like six different cars and just cut my right front tire. And so you know when you DNF in race one, race two then is also very much affected. So like we went from effectively leading the championship and then Danny Kvyat won that race and then like took a huge lead because like Sainz was also involved and like he was fighting for the championship and then my teammate was also involved. And like the next day I still think is one of the best races of my career. We started like 28th and like I finished eighth and set fast lap of the race and like scored you know two points or whatever but like it was all that we could do you know what I mean? yeah. and so we finished third in the championship so it's all right one question that i have which which i have all the time as european into the u.s but i would like the opposite one the american driver into european drive what's the difference it is a very different environment yes because obviously 
I think everyone here is 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 mostly welcoming. I think everything is like a way more open, right? The paddocks are way more open. Apparently, my, my welcome is overstayed. Apparently, I don't know. I don't know. Did, you didn't I, hear I any of that? Right. I mean, look, everyone's gonna fight someone at some point. That's what motorsports <laughs> all about. <laughs> I want to fight people too. Good, but in but over there, like you know, when you're in GP3 and GP2, you're like separated from F1, and like you never really get to go over there unless you're like you know you're a development driver or something like that. And e even the fans, like if you get an F1 paddock pass, is very very special, right? We have everyone over here, so it's like it's a very different environment. And I also found that like when racing GP3, there was not a lot of happiness. Like even if you win, it's like all right, that's what you're supposed to do. You know what I mean? But like to be fair, I mean they're right. Like it's it's like okay, yeah, like. I'm sorry that I finished second today. Like that sucks. But like it's 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 something that I think if you go over there, you learn like very quickly that like there's only room for a few people at the top of the sport, right? There's seven billion people in the world and only twenty people get to suit up for Formula One every weekend. Yeah. There's only 26 of us that get to suit up here and there's a lot of young drivers that are out there trying to do it so you got to nice. learn that pretty quickly and i'm actually very glad that i went over there to experience that because i think it, it, it definitely uh, toughened me up a little bit but like i i get it it's hard like what we're doing here is really difficult to beat all the rest of the other people that's that's great. what i love about the us is if you have a crash turn one or whatever in the race they'll pull the car back to try to repair it yeah and exactly. send you back and you're like 14 laps down 20 laps yes. down. like what's the point here the race never stops no I just, it's like yeah. we came on sunday to race we're gonna go racing whatever happened you know i think that's very different from europe where you know drivers are like yeah save the engine save it just don't go racing as you say it's very uh it's yeah. much more at box while it's here there's more I don't know, passion is involved in both ways. Yeah. But yeah, it's more, I don't know, you can feel it more maybe. Yeah, I mean like, you saw the Indy 500, right? Like yes. it's just, there's just, there's something about it that just like, it feels special and like everyone is having a good time. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like a, you know, like, oh, that person's cooler than that person. It's like, we are all here. We we made this race yeah. like doesn't matter if you're starting in the last row or the front row it's still an awesome introduction like i've started in the last row before i've started in the middle like wherever it is it's just like so like such a cool environment and you're so good fun. at leading that race well I, I, two years in a row I you lead the race. I, I i like that place a lot and i'm and i'm learning learn yeah it's We're tough i mean that's that's the other thing coming from europe you know when i look at overs and the, I, I look on tv and it's, ah, it's left it's flat Oof. it's boring it's easy it well, was tough yeah, yeah no it's this it's, year was way harder than oh that great that's too. why i yeah. had a good rookie yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was, yeah. You, you might have came in at the toughest rookie year, so sorry, pal. Yeah, well, I failed, and ah. I did my first 250 miles of Indianapolis. There's a saying at Indy, it's there are those who have hit the wall yes. at Indy, and there are those who will. Well, it, it's not a question of if, it's yeah. when. So you know what? You got it out of the way. Yeah, I did, and I, was, yeah. I wanted to be the exception. I yeah. was like, I already had my big shunt. I, I said the any. same thing, yeah. Um, yeah, I was at 200 miles an hour into the wall. The safer barrier, very good. Uh, the impact yeah, you feel all right? You good? It didn't feel bad. There you go. Honestly, it didn't feel bad. I didn't have any pain or muscle aches on the next day, which I was very was almost Detroit disappointed worse? with. Was Detroit worse? Yeah, Detroit was Oof. worse. I got 100 G in Detroit. <laughs> so that was a big one. But I heard same it. thing, I wasn't yeah, you're left right. calf. Yeah. Surprisingly, I left calf and a bit of the neck, but yeah, it wasn't too bad. Everyone's sore. Crashing hurts. I'm crashing hurts, <laughs> and it's part of the job, you know. If yeah. you try to get to 100%, there's days where you're going to be 102, and there's days you're going to be at 98. So. I don't have to explain that to you, man. You had probably one of the biggest crashes of any of us yeah. ever. Yeah. So no true. one has to explain <laughs> that to you. Very true. No. no, but you know, I think it's uh, that's another mentality difference here. If you crash, it's not a big deal. You know, you've tried yeah. and you failed. It's okay. Whereas I feel like in Europe, if you crash, we've got a really like why did you crash why did you do that i think it depends on where you're at in your career though because okay. like sometimes like when i remember when i was a rookie in indycar and like i obviously didn't you know like i was much younger and like i was like all right you can't make mistakes right but but i do believe that when you come over and you immediately prove yourself like you're on the pole or you get on the podium and like people understand that you're a good driver and like you can do it i think then it's like you know what if if something happens okay then it happens yeah, yeah. but like i definitely know what you're talking about in over there it's like, oh, if you crash, I mean, might as well be. You're yeah, you're out. Yeah, you're, you're a loser. <laughs> you're, you're done. You're behaving, and, yeah. and it's very different here. And, yeah. Uh, the drivers, you know, I mean, I'd imagine if I was doing that with Kimi Raikkonen, a rendezvous with Kimi. I mean, I'm... I'm it would never I'm, happen. I may try. I may <laughs> yeah. try. Uh, I, I got to interview Kimi once after he won the U.S. Grand Prix at Coda. Yeah? Yeah, I got to interview him after the race. 2018 or yep. 19? I was doing the post-race show with Will awesome. Buxton, and I was like, well, Kimi, you're the coolest guy I've ever met in my life. What do you think about... I, I asked him, I said, how does the Ferrari... 
how, what made it better today? And he's like, well, we were just faster. I was like, all right, all right. <laughs> like, that's all we needed. <laughs> now I'm an idiot. I feel bad for asking that question. I was hoping to get some like nice technical response. Like, well, we've been working a lot uh, on no, our aerodynamics. <laughs> <laughs> no. But it was it was nice to talk to him. I don't think he has any idea who I am, but it was fun. So we are middle of season in IndyCar. I believe you're going to be with us next year. Yeah, I think so. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Midget, when are we going to the Chili Bowl? The Chili Bowl is in January. Yes. And it's in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. I will never be doing it again. I'm, really? I'm done with Midget Racing. Well, then that, that's. I mean, my, you can do it if you want. That's my over because oh. I was only coming if you were there. I did six front flips the last time I was in a Midget and it hurt really badly. And I was uh, leading the race and I just flipped over. <laughs> I don't know why that happened. I may do Baja 1000. Would you like to come no. as a coach? No. No way am I wearing a I need catheter a coach for that race. Oh, no. You know you have to like wear a catheter for that, right? A what? The catheter? thing you put in your... No. Yeah, to pee. Yeah. Just doesn't sound like me. But you never know. Thanks for coming. No problem. Please, guys, let us a comment, like, subscribe. Tell us what you thought about it. I need to find out who's the next guest.